Thank you. It must be seen have a conspiracy of the organizers to have two journalists who were in Beijing on 1st of October of 1965 speak here. Now, uh, of course, it was very, I was very happy when I got the letter from uh, Robert to at, come and join this conference. It happened 50 years ago, and much of what I remember is kind of wrinkled, withered, or kind of decaying. But because of this assignment, as somehow a lot of things came up, and especially with this beautiful introduction and. Uh, earlier, many of the names came out. Now, Robert's letter to me at the time said, what are your experiences or uh, remember about what was leading up to September 30 and after? And September 30, 50 years ago, one event which I recall, except from October being in uh, Beijing, was that I bumped into General Yani at Istana Negara. He came out, you know, at the address of Randa from a meeting inside. And at the time, security was very easy. I mean, I, I could drive in with my scooter, park it. The, Piquet would say, ah, you should move it a little bit because later on the sun will shift and the, <laughs> so you put your bike in the shadow. I was chatting with this guy and suddenly I saw Gerardiani coming out, facing at the veranda. So at the time I just walked over to him and popped up the question I had. In my, I said, Payani. My Western friends tell me your country is going communist. And he was clearly, I mean, he looked a little bit, but he was clearly ready for it. He said, as long as I'm in command of the army, as long as there is an army, the communists will never take over. <laughs> now, of course, leading up to I mean, I think at that time, most journalists, diplomats, or whoever was in Jakarta following events were aware that the two big forces were on collision course. They were not hiding it. They were not making secrets. There were a lot of rumors about Dewan General and so on. But the fact is that people were talking openly about the coming clash between the communist PKI and the TNE. In fact, it was happening already every day. These were two big organizations which had very well organized and which had reached onto the village level. And they were clashing already in the, in the village. And several months leading up, Many high-ranking military men are already saying, we are just waiting for Sukarno to disappear and we will strike and punch on the, at the communists. At the same time, I think, amazingly, the, the communists were agitating for the fifth force to arm uh, the organization to give the peasants and the workers uh, arms because they wanted to uh, support the confrontation with Malaysia. So, I mean, the setting was clear. It was only when is it going to happen, how it's going to happen. Now, I think after hearing their presentations, we know, I think, not less, but more, more or less, but what happened, I think, is fairly well known now. Uh, how it happened, who was involved. Uh, <clears throat> but at the same time, there are still some questions. Now, 
one personal experience because again to go back to the original letter I got was what is your personal experiences is at one stage when Sham was captured by the uh, it was a very small team of uh, called Team Kalo. At three o'clock in the morning, I got a call from the leader of the team, a lieutenant, let's call him Lieutenant J. And he said, got him, but please, I'm going to pick you up because uh, you know, I, you, I want you to come with me. And then he picked me up at the jeep and we drove to the army headquarters about uh, the break of the day, maybe it's 5.30 we reached there. He said, I'm going in to report to the A1. A1 is the chief of intelligence. Uh, but I want you, I wanted you to come with me. Here is this <coughs> camera. I remember a beautiful Nikon. And it is recorded that we have captured Sham. And there's a news, newspaper, I think, with him to show that the date when it happened. And then also there is a picture of a street name to about the location. Now, previously, so several times, we kind of located him. But when we reported we are going to nap him at 6 o'clock in the morning, when we read it, he was gone. So this time, I reported we are going to catch him at 6, but instead of 6 in the morning as usual, we picked him up at 6 p.m. the night before, we got him. So essentially is in indicating I'm going to report to the chief of intelligence, but I don't know, quote unquote, I'm implying where he stands. Now, at that time, my, 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 uh, my thought was, does he think that he is involved in the communist movement? Uh, <clears throat> Later on, he came out and <clears throat> Everything seems to be okay. Said, Give me back the camera. <laughs> later on, you must say. In, in retrospect of the events, I think he was then not thinking only whether the A1 was a quote unquote communist, but in fact, who the A1 was reporting to at the time. The acting chief of the army was General Suharto. Now, and also in retrospect, I, I did once uh, met General Murshid. General Murshid is the deputy of General Yan. Now, he told me, listen, he is the deputy who, according to standard operating procedure, if Yani is for some reason out of town, the day-to-day -day duties will be his uh, authority. Except if Yani is unreachable, or not, at the time there were no handphones and so on, then the senior the senior, uh, what is it, the most senior commander of the army would become the acting chief of staff. Guess who is the name of the acting chief of staff? It's the Panglima Kostrat, the Kostrat commander. And he said on the day of October 1, when uh, I learned that there was something going on. I went to the army headquarters, which is Merdeka Utara, just about 
across from Merdeka Timur, Kostak Timur Command. And he picked, according to his story, Mushid picked up the phone and called Kostrad. And there, Muskita, Muskita was the chief of staff, I think, of Kostrad, picked up the phone and said, Suharto is here. Well, Mushid, these two were they supposed to be, you know, acting standard operating procedures, well known to the everybody, at least certainly within the army, who would be the acting commanders in case one Yani was gone missing. Of course, a question which that can be addressed is, why were they not on the plotters list, whoever the plotters are, if they wanted to decapitate the army high command or paralyze the the command structure. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> that's the question. Now, another uh, experience about Sham was that Sham also, one of the first questions Suharto asked when he arrived at the Kostad command was, where is Sham? That has been, well, uh, Mosquita, in fact, once confirmed it to me also. Uh, <clears throat> now, Sham, if you, I don't know if people have been doing research on it, but later on, later, uh, I learned that during the revolution, Sham, in fact, often, there was a trio that he, Patuk, called P-A-T-H-U-K, is comprised of Suharto, Latif and Shah. They were buddies then. Uh, <clears throat> now, another experience. Esparmat, who was then the intelligence chief, once said to me, whatever happens at Kramat, you know, the Communist Party headquarters, I will know maybe in less than 12 hours. And I think later on it was clear that I think Sham was one of the quote-unquote uh, informers. So indeed there are many questions. Uh, <clears throat> aside from the, there are many, I'm trying now to weave in the personal experiences because I'm happy to learn when I read the, read the, <clears throat> Uh, that I'm supposed to talk interpretation of events. Interpretation is always much easier. You can use your imagination, and <clears throat> especially about conspiracies. Before I left, uh, <clears throat> I was talking to some, I'm still involved a little bit in journalism, not operationally, but to some young journalist at Sinarapan and asked them, what are you going to do about uh, covering the coming 50th anniversary of uh, G30S? They would say, what are you talking about? I mean, we are not born yet. <laughs> Some others who were slightly older said, oh, yes, I saw the movie, which was, of course, sanctioned by Suharto, about uh, G30S. But I think it should be nice to make a more in-depth study about, for instance, the role of Shah. Now, and how is it that Nasution also, who is in fact, I think, considered to be, well, if we, the, the opposition of Aydin, the leader who frustrated Sukarno because he was the leading strategist intellectual who was blocking the rise, the peaceful rise of the PKI, the parliamentary road to power. And <clears throat> now people say that Nasution, in fact, 
declined when Suharto offered him to be the, the leader. Uh, and of course, the other question was why Mushid didn't take up the command. But that he explained to me. He said, look, you must remember in the army, the continuity of command is condition sine qua non. So when I picked up the phone and Muskita said, Suharto is here, uh, he implied that he accepted uh, Suharto's role. And indeed, before, when there was a change in the army, Sukarno was trying to uh, um, asked Nasution to bring up Yani. In fact, two generals came up, Yani and Suharto. At the time, Sukarno said, no, not Suharto, he's stubborn. He used the word, Dutch word, kopper. But I think in retrospect, if you look at the events that happened, the key person who was clearly very ready to well, I don't know, as you say, seize power. I mean, was ready. Um, uh, the question is also raised, so how much did he know? Now, I did ask the question, there was a white book about, 20, I think, 20 years after 65, uh, done by the Secretariat Negara. And, but it was not released. So I asked the, at the time, Muriono, is, is this second at the time, I think Sudarmono was the secretary of the cabinet. I said, is it going to be released? He said, ah, we cannot, because when it was presented to Suharto, Suharto said, <coughs> you know, because this is an official product of the state, it must be perfect, it must be what, uh, without error. And that was accepted as an interpretation that as a humble person that they are not perfect, but essentially you cannot release it as a government. So I said, well, I'm not a government official. So why don't you give it to me? Because I'm not perfect, so I can publish it. Well, well, anyway, but the person who uh, really compiled most of the material was another general. His name is Taher. And <clears throat> he was the chief of the Teperpu, Team Pemeriksa Pusat. The one who looked at all the, you know, the Mahmi look, all the documents and so on. And I was very close also with Taher. So I went to see him and I had a kind of an arrangement. Don't tell me lies. If you, cannot, you don't want to answer, don't answer, but don't give me a lie as an answer. So when I asked him, this report is there. Is it because Sukarno has been involved? Ah, you know the answer already. Uh, <laughs> so then I asked, what about the present president, Suharto? Is he also implicated? Uh, he just looked at me and, and smiled. I told you about Sukarno. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> this general, Staher, was very close to Suharto. Uh, <clears throat> At the same time, uh, I think he was too committed to the truth, but he was an investigator. You know, they have in the army the uh, legal, the legal arm, which is including the prosecuting. But yeah, it's also he is a military police in background, more investigation, not not the prosecutor. And I think from my conversations with him, 
you know, we know that not the whole truth is presented in court. A lot of half truth. And of course, between the truths, maybe you have to read between the lines or cross out the end, read between the lies. But sometimes it's possible to extract the truth from. Now, I think about this uh, event G30 S. We need a writer like John Carré who <laughs> kind of weave in because sometimes fiction can tell the truth better than the facts. Same time, now I'm dealing with young reporter. I said, they say, well, this is the facts. Yes, but did you get the facts right? Yes. Okay. Now, but are they the right facts? How do I know? Did you, we have the answers. Yes, but did you ask the right questions? Well, I think this conference should maybe also look, because if you look at what we have, we have a lot of answers, and maybe we have a lot of right answers. But the question is, do we have the right questions? I think I end with this. Thank you. Thank you.